So this is an interesting one. This right here was sent to me by Anthony on Facebook. Um, actually quite a while ago now, sorry Anthony. Um, but we thought it would be, and I thought it would be a interesting bike to film. Um, it's a bit of a strange one, obviously. It's a folding bike. It's tucked up nicely in this carry case, which is all original. And I've actually managed to work out how to get it in there, which was awesome, because um, it was a little tricky. Now, whether I keep this all in shot is one thing, but I'll try. So, we've got the bag, um, which conveniently unzips both sides. To reveal the Bickerton portable. The seat is kind of just chucked in there. There's no real place to put this with this super long seat post. The bike folds open and then you've got this little hook top and bottom which if you're lucky come on there we go locks into place and then if that will stay up for me let's put the saddle in Saddle goes in and locks off. And then once you've got the saddle in, it should be just a case of this clamp is so tight. Uh, whoops. Bringing the handlebars up, clamping that down. Spinning the bars round so that the stem fits that way and locking that off. And then bringing the handlebars up into some sort of position. And that is your folding bike unfolded. The bag then, apparently. Literally, just hook onto there, and you've got yourself a little carry bag. Um, whether it folds up again, let's see. And that is now the Bickerton portable ready for action. So, a little history of the Bickerton portable, the Bickerton company. Um, it was actually somewhat started in 1968 by a chap uh, of the name Harry Bickerton. Um, he was an engineer for Rolls-Royce Andy Haviland. So, you know, good engineering background. And the bike, I believe, oops. And the bike, believe it or not, actually came about because of a driving ban. Um, he was banned from driving and he was unhappy with the bikes I'm after on the market at the time, um, road bikes or folding bikes. He was, oh, Torvis just chased a load of birds. He was unhappy on both of them. Um, so, of course, being the engineer he was, decided to design his own lightweight and easy to use uh, bike. Apparently, the bike came out at 17 pounds, which is 7.7 .7 kilos, and could fit inside that shopping bag, which you've seen already. Um, yeah, it was quite nice. Um, and the patent was filed, like I said, in 1972. So the first 300 bikes were made knife and fork method. Um, don't ask me what that means, because I don't know, and I can't find out what it means. Um, but these, those first bikes were sometimes 
heat treated in the family's Arger ovens um, until the full scale production kicked in which was in about 1976. In fact, the bike was launched to the world on June the 9th, 1976, as the Bickton Portable Bicycle Company went global. Um, and yeah, it kind of went on for a little bit there. I couldn't find any production values of how many were produced. But in 1988, the country version was released with 20 inch reels front and rear. And then in 1992, unfortunately, ceased production. So this one is the classic model. Um, it's got the 16 inch rear wheel with the 14 inch front wheel. It's got Vineman brakes on it. Uh, it's an alloy aluminium frame. The wheels are still steel, so the chrome steel, so obviously they're not gonna break that well in the wet. Um, and it has the dynamo lights on it, which I need to get working and the Sturmy Archer three-speed hub gear on the rear. Um, and it's an interesting bit of kit, isn't it? I'm not entirely sure what I'm gonna do with it. Um, I know I need to clean it up, just get some parts polished. The frame itself is painted rather than left with the raw aluminium. Um, the handlebars, the stem, uh, and probably the crank set I can polish up. It does need some new tyres, so I'm going to look for getting them. Now, I don't know if I can include the original adverts in this video. Um, I'll try to. I'll try to record them and put them up. If not, I'll just link them in the description. Yeah, the bike itself, when you're on it, it's not too bad a riding position. You're quite upright. Um, the brake's definitely need some adjustment on it. But the one thing I notice about this bike is the handlebars. <laughs> Obviously these long aluminium sort of ape hanger style bars, if we do that up, they flex quite a bit. So there is that flex in the middle, but also the clamp on this doesn't seem to hold the bars completely still <laughs> they won't go forwards because they're on a pin so the pin can't the bars can't rotate forwards anymore but you can still pull them down fairly easy so i'm gonna have to have a look at that and see if i can maybe free up that joint a little bit more there is a lot of wobble in this as well which i need to investigate um, so yeah, I think it needs a good service. I'm going to say it's actually fairly well designed for someone who wants to polish it all up again after because each change day is individual, the brake bridge is bolted on, is clamped on, uh, it's clamped uh, the bolt goes through and across. The chain stays are also just bolted on and separate. The seat tube that is bolted on from the bottom so it's threaded on the bottom of the seat tube and then obviously the clamp just comes off and that's pretty much the whole bike is like that. Um, so I reckon you could strip it down pretty well. You've got this massive 52 tooth uh, crank set, Silstar, SR Silstar. Um, and even the bracket here, I've adjusted it now so it's pulled in nice and tight. Um, but the bracket, all this can be unbolted, taken off, repainted, treated, however you want to do it. All the little pins and clamps and everything on the headset can be taken out. I'm sure you could just knock them out. They're just like compression pins really. So you could knock those out, clean them up, uh, make sure everything is put back together properly. These clamps are all chrome steel so they have flaked off and there's nothing much I can do about that apart from repainting stuff. 
Um, and where are we looking? Further down. Oh, it's so bright. I'm missing the little cap that goes on the front. Um, and yeah, literally, as I said, if you go further down, there's little grub screws in there that you could take out, take the fork out. The whole thing comes apart. And while I think that's a really nice feature, that everything, everything can come apart, I'm sure it makes the bike as flexy as it is. Um, just riding it around this little driveway, you can feel everything flex. Uh, the handlebars flex inwards and outwards. If that, I've got that clamp loosened up a little bit now, so I can clamp it down a bit more. Um, but you can still pull the bars back if you're too aggressive. Um, and you can just feel it flex as well at the fold in the middle and it seems the rear stays, um, the rear triangle flexes a little bit as well. So it's a nice design and I'm sure it is a perfectly reasonable commuter but it does flex a bit, yeah. So what do you think of it? Um, do you like it? Do you not like it? Have you ridden one before? Leave you all your comments in the little section down below. Um, and yeah, I just thought this was a nice little look into the Bickerton Portable. Um, and I think this will go on to my aunt now, who says she might want it. So once all this lockdown's over, I can drop it off to her. I'll probably have to put some new tyres on it, because they are a bit dry rotted. But yeah. Anyway, Bickerton Portable. There it is.